Now, uh, you have uh, gone through a CAD CAM courses uh, under, at your UG and PG level. But uh, this term seems to be something strange to you. Uh, reverse, similarly, there is a forward engineering. There are two terms. One term is known as forward engineering. Another term is known as reverse engineering. Suppose somebody gives you some STL file and on that STL file, if you would like to embosh or engrave your name of the company onto that model, but it is the STL. Now to work on that STL, you need to carry out another CAD operation where on a plane you need to write some text and then apply for engraving depth or embossing depth. That software which works on STL, we say it is a forward engineering because you have already n number of operations carried out in CAD model and now n plus 1th operation you are doing onto that STL file we say it is a forward engineering but when I say reverse engineering in nutshell if we have a physical object and if we can convert physical object into digital object we say it is a process of reverse engineering looking to the terms of CADD computer edited design and drafting but the broad terms of reverse engineering are having a lot of uh, philosophy into it here I have put one uh, para which shows the process of reverse engineering that it discovers the technological principle of a device object or a system through analysis of its structure function and operation this is what a PhD student is doing literature with you. What a pro whatever product he wants to develop, you just go into the history of that product. You go back to that project, what has happened in past. So reverse engineering also deals with discovering that principles, that how the earlier products are working. So going back into the research of any development of product is known as the process of reverse engineering. It involves a mechanical device, electronics component, software program. Apart in analyzing its working in detail, usually with intention to construct a new device. So when you go to the literature review, then you say what is a gap and you say what is the new work you are going to do in PAT. So similarly here, to construct a new device, you just go into back, back um, history and find out what has happened. So that is the philosophy behind the reverse engineering. So program that does the same thing without actually copying anything from the original. See, when I say physical object into digital object, we are copying. But the principle of reverse engineering says that its purpose should not be hampering to the original inventor. So without actually copying anything from the original, you should take that work as a reference work and make a necessary amendment into it for a betterment of mankind, for a betterment of uh, academy, that's reverse engineering. So again, this is summarized into a very good paragraph that a systematic methodology for analyzing the design of an existing device or a system either as an approach to study the design or as a prerequisite for redesign. So here you can see this word redesign. You are trying to amend something, improve something. Of course, the exact thing you can copy whenever there is original sources are not available. Then this uh, devices which are used into reverse engineering are very useful. We'll see that uh, cases also in the coming slides. Now, <coughs> need of reverse engineering. Uh, those who are coming from Gujarat, they know that Sastu Saru and Tarat Whatever things we want, we, we want that it should have a good quality. But I want that product should be at cheapest price. And I don't want to wait for the delivery. I want the product immediately. So, the global competition needs to cater the requirement of these three points that I want the product at best quality but at the same time the cost of the product should be cheapest as low as possible and the lead time 
to develop that product should be minimum so that a customer can get the product within a minimum time so if you if you go back 30 40 years back even when when i used to book the telephone from our bsnl the delivery time was 5 years 6 years 7 year even in my childhood i have seen that father used to book the bajaj sticker and his son may be getting the delivery 10 years 15 years maybe that time the uh, at that time it was the scenario that you will get the product delivery after 10 years now if somebody wants to buy a car you just uh, raise your intention to buy it now people will be after you and they will say sir if you want loan we are ready to give loan also so that is a scenario of global competition because when there was not availability of the computational facilities the lead time of product was very high so manually people used to put their ideas onto paper they used to develop these sketches the sketches will be developed into drawing then it was going to the shop floor for production after production when your product was ready at that time somebody will put up their uh, concern that this is uh, not acceptable so entire cycle of uh, the preparation was to be repeated again and this was a scenario in past years but as soon as when we will assign some technology has been developed and the cost of computation has gone down because the earlier uh, the computer was not affordable to the smaller industry now the computer is a part of life of everybody human being all human being are using computational facility in one or another form so therefore with the easy availability of the computational facility in a global competition now everybody is participate to the best for giving the best quality they also compete to reduce the cost of the product and they also now there is a concept of say concurrent engineering that many people are working together and the person those who are a designer when he is designing something and if he puts the hole at a 45 degree with a tapping on it then the person from shop floor can put a remark to him that boss you are putting a hole 45 degree when it will come to my machining center it is not possible for me to do the tapping on it so or it will be difficult for me to do that so this kind of comments during the product development will immediately make a alert designer to change uh, his design and accordingly even uh, the marketing people can also put their comments that this color will not be acceptable in the market this kind of texture surface will not be acceptable if you do this it will be beneficiary so all these kind of uh, information and feedback what we are getting as a concept of concurrent engineering into the product development that will help the designer to make the best design and that is why we say the need of reverse engineering is to develop the model in a minimal time so for a minimal time these concepts are there to convert physical object into a digital object now in the beginning i say that when forward engineering and when reverse engineering when you have a digital model and if you want to proceed further into digital model we say forward engineering but when you don't have a digital mod model and if you have physical model if you have something else then we say it is a reverse engineering to bring to a digital model for further operation because without digital model you cannot go for any 3d printing technology now when this become ethical to copy the object when it becomes ethical now this slide raises few points that when no drawings or design model exists for a product that must be replaced suppose your component is gone it is broken it is damaged and original manufacturer no longer exists or produces that product under the circumstances you can use the physical object you can go for reverse engineering you can convert it into digital model and you can go for either cam or you can go for a 3d printing similarly when drawing models have been created but the components have been modified during iterative prototyping design testing and use hence the existing document is no longer relevant so if relevant documents are not available 
if the original company is not available under the circumstances you can copy the physical object to a digital object now if you take this case <coughs> of comparison so when you would like to have a cim computer uh, sorry computer integrated inspection those people are using cmm to check this so when you want to compare the fabricated part to its cad description or to a standard item for inspection or a quality assurance purpose then also you can use this kind of devices to measure the physical object and converting into digital sign and then that digital feature will be converted with the specification of component in some situation designers gives a shape to their idea by using a clay plaster wood foam rubber but you need a cad model so to convert this basic idea which is available in terms of uh, approximate model you can use this technology to convert it into cad model which will make easy further to make the manufacturing of that part as products become more organic in shape designing a cad may be challenging or impossible now here i have shown you two figure one you can see its engineering component the rectangular block which is having a two circular cut out now this has a feature which you can do in cad modeling also at the same time you can machine also so if you are able to uh, create this kind of uh, model which is of engineering nature then you don't need to go for uh, uh, reverse engineering basically you can measure it but here also you can apply reverse engineering for measuring the dimension suppose you have a photograph of this component and you don't have a dimension now if you want to build it how you will do it so you can put a scale behind it you can take the photograph and i will show you one uh, movie also to digitize this uh, particular engineering feature to measure the dimension you can scale out it so we say digital mapping you just put a known uh, scale uh, of any thing and then you convert this particular uh, figure into the uh, dimensional figure so reverse engineering can be applied to this part also if you have a image like this and you don't have a dimension second thing when we say that non geometrical thing say statue of labor this sardar vallabh bhai patel now this statue of uh, uh, unity uh, if you want to repeat by 3d printing then you need to first scan out this figure so that it's three dimensionally all the coordinates all points are being collected as a point cloud into dot txt format or dot pts format and then later on you can take that point cloud data into appropriate reverse engineering software and you can convert it into the feature format of a cad you can then use a, maybe the surface patches or you may maybe some cad feature extrude revolve feet something like that so basically the reverse engineering provides the solution to this problem where the physical model is a source of information for the cad model this also referred as a part to cad normally when we use 3d modeling software we say it is a cad to part because we make a model to create a part so after making a model either you will do 3d printing or you will go for a cad machining computer aided machining or manufacturing so this is a conventional process that you develop a cad model digital model and then convert it into part but reverse engineering says that you have a part and convert that part into digital part we say cad model this cad model can further be used either for cae computer aided engineering analysis or you can directly use it for cam computer aided manufacturing or you can directly use this part for uh, 3d printing the relevant terms uh, related to reverse engineering say your, your course on advanced manufacturing deals major topics related to 
3D printing or additive manufacturing. So relevant to the uh, reverse engineering, the terms called say rapid product development. So when you print something and if that product is useful product, this is the rapid product and you are developing with the help of 3D printing machine or any devices. So for example, if you take injection molding companies must drastically reduce the cost, tool and die development times by reverse engineering. A three-dimensional product or model can be quickly captured in a digital form, remodeled, exported for rapid prototyping, tooling or rapid manufacturing. So these terms are also very relevant that if you produce something by 3D printer then, and if it is a useful product, we say rapid manufacturing. And whatever product you use, if it can be utilized for a tooling, maybe say a bending tool, then we say it is a rapid tooling. So, uh, if you take the 3D printing case of uh, ABS material, if you produce a gear from ABS and if you produce the uh, gear from PLA, if you use a PLA and the gear cannot be used for actual application, we say it is rapid prototyping. But if you take a material ABS or nylon and you can use it in the field actually, we say it is a rapid manufacturing or rapid product development. Similarly, if you can make a V block and V punch and if it can be used for bending some material, soft material, we say it is a rapid tooling. So these are the relevant term related to reverse engineering. Uh, the concluding statement for the term reverse engineering that it is the process of engineering backward to build the CAD model. Geometrically identical to an existing product. Subsequently, CAD models are used for manufacturing or other application. Other means it can be CAE analysis or it can be 3D printing. An example application is where CAD models are unavailable, unusable or insufficient for existing parts that must be duplicated or modified. So, there are many practical applications for reverse engineering ranging from tool and die making to biomedical device design and manufacturing. So this is how the uh, reverse engineering is important. The process flow in reverse engineering is first you have to capture the data. Physical object is to be digitized. So data is captured into a point cloud format. We say digitization of the object. So three-dimensional shape of the product is acquired by an appropriate measurement method. Now this appropriate measurement method can be any kind of scanner. After you capture the data, you need to process that data because your data may have a noise, it may be scattered, it may have inaccuracy, it may have redundant data, it may have additional data, so all that data, some data need to be reduced, some data need to be deleted, some data need to be added. So we say it is a processing of measured data. After completion of the optimizing the available data, you say that this data is enough to provide me the smooth CAD model. You will convert that point cloud into CAD model. So complete CAD model of the product must be built in order to represent all the relevant data of the product. Comparison with CAD CAM. The CAD CAM starts with the virtual world with the goal to produce better products. So I say first we make the model and then we make part. Reverse engineering starts with the real world with the goal to produce high quality digital model. In the virtual world that can be used for CAD CAM CAE and now 3D printing also. With its root in imaging, reverse engineering offers descriptive modeling method. The software extracts geometry, topology, information from measurement data and describes it to the user. So which can be further used in the any machines. Now once you convert that data, you can 
the data can be converted for any feature of this CAD modeling. You can go for extrude, revolve, sweep, green, lock, all these kind of possible. The effectiveness, I think in the first slide I have uh, discussed with you that good quality with the minimum cost, with the minimum time. So that is the main effectiveness of reverse engineering, faster development cycle due to minimum iteration, more accurate computer-aided engineering analysis, less manufacturing waste, and faster and more accurate quality inspection. So computer-aided inspection using a CMM is a very important uh, aspect of uh, this um, concept. The methodology we I have already discussed, you can measure uh, the data, physical data into point cloud and then you can reconstruct into 3D model. This can be done by scanning technology. I will show you different uh, facilities available at our laboratory. You can use CMM, laser scanner, light digitizers and computed tomography. The applications uh, which uh, or the uh, software which converts the point cloud into the model or image where rapid form, geomagic, uh, even pro engineer Rex model, these are a very good uh, effective tools to convert the point cloud into the 3D model. The applications, any product you de develop may be having its utility, maybe in defense research, aerospace industry, inventor, inventory building, in medical field. So everywhere uh, uh, you can see the application, even in our one of the research consultancy, we go for reverse engineering of fuel accumulator of MiG-29. So a huge component was used to uh, convert 3D model. The technology review uh, for this, that various techniques of reverse engineering are primarily based on scanning techniques and the scanners are extracting the geometry and topology information from the measurement of data available from the object to be scanned. The laser scanner uh, work on the concept of time of flight that whenever a probe uh, produces a beam of laser, it strikes to the component and it comes back. So basically uh, this round trip determines the total travel distance of the light and accordingly by knowing the velocity of that it will be converted into distance. So that is how this time of flight is uh, very important. It is also uh, known as triangulation of the laser scanner that a beam falls onto the component and it gets written. So this return journey Whatever time is being taken, it is measured by the system and it converts it into the distance by knowing the velocity of this particular beam. So this is the main concept in uh, laser scanner. Similarly, they, it is uh, classified into two types of scanner. One we say non-contact types of scanner and contact types of scanner. So in a non-contact, uh, laser is a main uh, scanner and in a contact, it, whether it can be CMM, it can be needle, this, or it can be ferro-arm type of component, arm scanner, that can be utilized. So laser scanner, uh, we have a facility of pizza, you can put the component into laser and directly you will have a component onto the screen. So any statue, if you put into the scanner, uh, the red color, what you see is a shaded view, but it is generally a point mesh. So Point mesh can immediately be imported into the uh, RE software and then later on you can work it for creating surface patches. The, this particular machine we are uh, uh, handling with the Dr. Pixar 3 application which is a windowware application which controls the various parameters for scanning uh, to control the speed, to control the appropriate uh, acquiring of data. You can have data from different angles and then you can uh, merge them, you can control the defects also and then finally you will be able to convert it into nerves and surface patches. Later on you can assign a thickness to surface to convert it to solid model. See, these operations we will see mainly laser works on two principles, rotary and uh, plane operation. 
uh, in next slide will in next uh, PPT I will show that. Then uh, converting this scan data into polygon and nerve surfaces, the output of the machine is normally either STL, DXF, and IGS. So if you are 3D printing machine except STL, then directly that STL file can go to any 3D printing machine and uh, you can print it directly. No need to make any amendment into model. The machine what I am using is having the 16 uh, inch height capability and 10 inch in diameter and it has a dual mode whether axisymmetrical object can be uh, scanned through rotary option and the rectangular kind of or polygon based uh, component uh, can be operated through plane scanning technology whatever is the best uh, that can be used contact type of scanner we say they are also digitizer they can be of desktop size or can be of bigger size so uh, this is a, a microscope digitizer we are using with a half a meter uh, capability of circle within that we can occupy the data but with this device even you can scan the entire maruti car by establishing a different rail and different station then you need to handle the different files of notepad to add them for uh, their x coordinate because y and z remain same so every station after one feet or after two feet if you put a different station and try to maintain the center of this arm type of digitizer then you can move on it and capture the data in different notepad file and whatever x you are getting you have to add that distance between the two stations so even a six feet long job uh, can also be scanned using this uh, ferro arm type of uh, digitizer similarly you can have a needle type of scanner where we say desktop scanner but it has a limitation that it can only uh, scan 180 degree so suppose if you want to create a cavity die mold so component half component will to be engraved into the bottom portion of the tool and another half uh, should be in other half of the component in another half of the component that this scanner can be utilized for 180 degree but the very good advantage of uh, this contact type of thing is you don't uh, need to be worry about color material while in case of uh, laser scanner it is a very sensible to the uh, color black color cannot be scanned and even if it is a very reflective surface then also it is difficult to scan so every system has got their own uh, plus minus point the similar uh, one uh, machine i am using from modella which works on dual purpose it scan also and it print also so it's a small basically uh, small 3d milling machine but the probe can be used for uh, scanning also so point cloud can also be scanned and then it can be uh, printed also similarly you can use the cmm coordinate measuring machine for measuring the dimension or measuring the profile or angularity depth mapping digitizing or imaging even shaft measurement circular axisymmetrical object can be measured so i think all are uh, familiar about this that uh, this particular probe will give you x y z coordinate wherever it get touches so it can be either used for measurement inspection or even for generating the point cloud data uh, see this component is axisymmetrical component and it is a very shining component so if i try to keep it into the laser scanner then uh, the chances for getting the data will be uh, very less and even if you get that data then you need to do lot of repairing work into it so that's why you can see that uh, this is a very old figure i have uh, opened it into uh, autocad by dot dxf option data exchange file format option this is not stl so in autocad i can see this but here if you focus many of the areas are having a hole so these kind of few areas are open and this kind of defects you cannot avoid for any reverse engineering software 
the repairing task is a very big issue. So whenever uh, you go for reverse engineering, then scanning of the data is not important. Any machine can scan the data very easily, but to convert that data into the 3D model is very difficult because it requires a lot of efforts to convert point cloud into the uh, nerves and that nerves uh, group into the surface and converting surface into the solid model. So either you should have a specific software where you have an auto option, but auto options are very dangerous. You do not have control onto the shape. But manual intervention of skill engineer is very much required. Then only you will be able to convert the uh, 3D point cloud data into the solid model. Now here what you can see that whatever data we have acquired here, in, in this view you can see this is hollow from inside. And even some top data is not obtained. Now uh, it's a... Uh, a designer who has to take an approximation to fill that data in uh, appropriate shape. So from here also you can see that the base is not there. So base is not there, top is also not there. And many particular instances you will find that there are some holes, pin holes are there. So you need to fill all the gaps uh, into that model. The application industries everywhere you need to develop the product and you need a model. Uh, all these uh, industries are uh, using it. Now, uh, before I uh, uh, go for actually showing you the, uh, high, uh, the scanning machines, I would like to show you uh, uh, some Indian Jugar, what we did 15-20 years back when we were not having all these uh, machineries and we don't have all these uh, scanning facilities. I just uh, like to uh, share you one small work so that at least those uh, who are a teacher uh, giving some project to their student, this will be very useful that even if you don't have any uh, scanning technology, but the concept you can explain to your student and your student can also generate the 3D point cloud data. So here I am sharing uh, my uh, one uh, UG project which I might have done 20 years back. <clears throat> so, but the concept, to explain the concept is uh, very important. Say, what is our objective? The objective was to collect the point cloud data. And to collect the point cloud data, we need a coordinate measuring machine or we need a 3D scanner. Or the question comes, if I don't have all these things, what we can do? Now, here, uh, in this present work, the small scale coordinate measuring setup is fabricated. And the point cloud is obtained with the help of this setup, which is later on transferred to IDEA solid modeling package. Because uh, maybe in uh, 2004, four five, I used to... I uh, use IDEA as a solid modeler and now IDEA is not nobody is using the company is also merged with uh, UG, Unigraphics. So the product is Unigraphics now. Now <clears throat> I take the car model which has a maximum X limit 158 mm, Y74 mm and Z50 mm. This is a toy car. So I, I use a mechanical small scale coordinate measuring setup. Uh, which is prepared with the range of X, Y, Z as 200 mm, 100 mm and 50 mm. The movement is controlled in X, Y using screw and movement in control in Z direction is measured uh, using a digital vernier with special teeth. So if you take a vernier and try to measure X direction, you can see that the bottom uh, strip, uh, even we measure uh, depth using that uh, vernier. But if it is a flat surface, it will give you uh, good accuracy. But if it is uh, non, non flat surface, then it may give some inaccuracy. But anyhow, just to understand the concept, uh, we specifically make one tip 
and the correction factor was also introduced so that a vernier can also measure the z dimension now you can see this figure um, i will uh, just take a uh, just a 10 15 second rest so that you can see this image carefully if you have a question you just put a question to me ashi you are hearing me yes sir okay. so uh, this figure is a uh, very simple i prepared it from channel c channel of ms channel uh, the, those who are uh, young faculty members, for them this is a very good basic idea. They can prepare CMM by this concept. So any anxiety, if you feel to ask me some question by looking to this setup, because this is a purely mechanical setup and I don't say it is working on few microns, but I say it, it uses dial gauge. So whatever is the accuracy of dial gauge, I can take that accuracy. Similarly, uh, whatever is an accuracy of vernier, we can use the vernier because uh, this reading I have taken by vernier also and dial gauge also. But sir, here uh, say if you say one particular uh, coordinate point, so uh, by by using screw A and B, will we get uh, X, Y, and Z? Yeah, that is what I am explaining. Say. Uh, <coughs> We started with the this lower uh, left side, whatever is the left much point, we try to put our indicator from here. So uh, that may be our starting point. Then the screw B can be rotated for X movement and say you rotate it for one revolution. There was a calibration given here. So if you rotate it for one revolution, it will move in X for one mm. And at that time, screw A is fixed. So one by one, you rotate this one revolution, one revolution. Your Y remains fixed, but your X is changing. 1 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm, 4 mm. If you want to take a precise reading, then according to calibration, you can move half revolution, some partial fractional revolution to take 1.1 also. But here, the pitch was set in such a way that if you rotate this low for this handle, for one revolution, it will move in X direction for 1 mm because the screw was used with the pitch 1 mm. So after changing all X distances at an interval of 1 mm, we measure Z because Y is constant. Then this, for, this screw is rotated for 1 mm. So again, getting to the same position, Y is changed and again measuring this. So continuously repeating this for various positions, Manually, students have taken this 11,692 reading. That is a coordinate point for obtaining. So, um, maybe 20 years back, student has done this very uh, huge work to collect this, uh, to keep the patience for getting 11,000 uh, reading is also a very good achievement. And after that, you can have a table. Now, once you have a table of this curve, X, Y, Z, one curve, when you move from X one position to X last position, basically you are getting one curve. So when I change Y, another curve. When I change Y, another curve. So accordingly, all curves are placed over here in a sketching plane. Now, you can always go for variable section sweep or you can always go for a loft kind of command and 
you will be able to create the model like this. So uh, with the uh, non-availability of any sophisticated instrument, uh, this model was created, it was splitted also and accordingly the molds were also created and wax was poured to get the completion of this particular uh, model. Now this x, y, z, y, z axis it measures 0 0.01. So if you see 0 0.01, it is in micron only. So you have a capacity even with the screw and even with the dial gauge or vernier, you can get the point cloud data with 0 0.01. So you can deal with 10 micron, 100 micron accuracy with this. Now I will uh, uh, show you how we measure it. So I'll just uh, all this scanning technology. I'll share with you the movie how we operate the machines. Uh, is is it uh, visible? Yes, sir. Okay. It is streaming properly. This movie is just to give you the feel that how uh, lasers can work. This is double side gum tear, so we don't require any vice or any holding devices. Even uh, this double gum side tape is enough to hold the component for solving the purpose of clamping. The object what I have placed over here is axis symmetrical object. So you you can scan even with a small segment small degree segment can also be uh, used. No need to scan the entire object. This is also axis symmetrical object. So one curve is required and one axis is required to model this component. Now this component uh, you can see uh, we can create it with the help of extrude if we have a sketch. So the top face of this component is very important to scan rather than the sides. So you can change the face also. Direction also you can change. So this all component we prepare and we apply white Bosni color so that in a laser uh, we don't have any reflection issues. If it is a silver color then you, will, you may have uh, reflection is used but if you use this matte Bosni color white then you can get the best performance of the laser scanning. This component was to give the feel of loft command. So various uh, CAD commands a student can understand accordingly the components are uh, being prepared for capturing its data. Now if you see this component now, if uh, the student is able to capture this and if he tries to complete its 3D model, then all features are included. Extrude, revolve, sweep. This is a sweep command. This is for sweep feature and this is a loft. So, majority of the CAD feature can be covered but if this particular uh, component is exercised.
Now here we have given some slot also. So even with extrude cut can also be exercised. And this I was discussing loft command, loft command and sweep command. So from here to here cross section remains same but this path you can decide. So only single component uh, normally in lab if a student is able to scan it uh, they, they will be able to exercise all CAD features on it. Now, uh, this is a thread, threaded component. <coughs> Here, see some defect is there. Now, we'll see how uh, this component can be uh, scanned. This component is uh, placed into scanner and you can see the table is rotating. Uh, the laser head uh, acquires position from top to bottom. It decides the plane and it uh, strikes the beam of laser onto the component. As we know that it uh, measures the uh, distance by triangulation principle. Uh, here in movie may not be so easily uh, visible, but uh, when you see the physically, you will be able to see red color beam, which is falling onto the component. So that gives the instant position of uh, laser beam. This is axis symmetrical object, so we are using a rotary uh, scanning. The table is uh, rotating completely 360 degree and the data is continuously acquired. Can you see the video properly? The moment, can you see? Yes, sir. Okay. It is streaming properly. Yeah. Now, in a few moments, we'll see how the data uh, is captured and you can see it onto the screen. Because this is a physical object into machine uh, where the table is rotating and the laser head is uh, capturing the data but when this data is stored by the machine and it is transferred to the PC system then gradually the data is built up Now you see this, uh, in a PC, you will be able to see that data. Here it is uh, changing and on a PC, it gradually builds up. Whenever the data is uh, acquired, you will see this symbol that data is in continuation to build it. Now, this is a completed uh, figure in a computer screen you can see the model.
but you can see the model is hollow from the top and you can also see the gap over here now these are the defects uh, available into the point cloud data and here is a skill required for any reverse engineering uh, software engineer to take care for all this defect so unless and until if all these defects are not resolved you cannot go for a final model and and for the further operations like machining or 3d printing so uh, basically uh, this gives the hollow structure see from bottom also it is a hollow and you can see lot of uh, spots are there which needs to fill them and some of the portion is there so uh, the point cloud data needs to be edited very thoroughly sometimes mm. you need to select some data remove it sometimes you need to add some data sometimes you need to repair some data so you can uh, save this uh, point cloud data into this project file even you can save this data as a dot stl also and once you save this data as a dot stl it will directly go to uh, 3d printer for printing here you can see all these options are there uh, dxf stl point cloud xvi all these options are there and uh, you can save them even you can save a dot txt also text mode also you can see of course you can have a setting either tab mode or a point cloud or a comma mode so you can have x comma y comma z or you can have x tab y tab z so notepad file if you open this is tab format x tab y tab z maybe lakhs of points will be there it is a very difficult to read this file so one component if you scan uh, by different uh, setting parameters then uh, it is a, a tremendous data uh, which is available into notepad file any any position you can put the cursor and you can get the point point coordinate x comma y comma z now uh, if i want to scan this mouse the physical object mouse i use a needle scanner so here the screen uh, application environment for that software dr pizza 3 we can fix the pitch x y and z so here you have the uh, x can pitch y can pitch and z bottom so you can define the area at what is the area of interest to scan uh defi defining this particular envelope you can uh, give this x coordinate y coordinate and similarly this entire area pitch also you can define if you give a 10 micron point 1 pitch and if you give 1 mm pitch when you give point 1 mm pitch then your data will be very huge now you can see the needle coming here see here this is a needle so this needle is going up so depending upon the envelope uh, what we have selected uh, first it will define the area and then it will uh, do the scanning in that particular area only see this needle is defining its position and then it in in a software we need to define four corner so first it will ensure four corner and when when you say z bottom then this will become its bottom this position and from there it it will it won't scan the above points So in a software, we need to define this area. We need to define this x, y, z bottom. So wherever you would like to strike the C D position, then you can put your cursor over here and double click. It will touch that particular point. Now see, depending upon x, y, 
at the pitch what you have given the needle is scanning I hope you have understood that uh, how uh, this uh, contact type of scanner is working. See smaller area with uh, different speed it is collecting the data. Uh, the similarly, uh, you can also uh, have a complicated object can be scanned and it can be uh, seen into uh, the screen. Various views, shaded views can also be, this is a switch we have scanned through needle scanner and the top view, bottom view, uh, which are uh, visible over here. You can also save this file as a DXF, STL, IGES. So all these options are uh, available for uh, scanning the component using laser scanner. This is shaded view. All points can be seen over here. Uh, what I, we have not seen here is a CMM can also be seen here. To take the point cloud data. The application of this uh, CMM is for uh, computer aided inspection. You can see the spherical ball of CMM. It can measure the top face, bottom face, and three points. So this is a calibration of uh, this particular setup by sphere and later on uh, you can use this uh, for computer aided inspection also. Uh, I hope uh, uh, I have tried to give you the exposure of uh, this particular machines. Now these three devices, uh, how they work, you have already seen it. The basic principle also uh, I have tried to explain you. The model what I am using is six, uh, LPS 600. Now uh, the scanning is done by the rotary scanning. Uh, you can see here the schematic diagram. When you have a control from bottom to top, 
so you have height from 0 to 500 uh, up to 14 inches and circumference you can take 0 to 90 degree so 0 to 360 degree 0 to 90 degree depending upon uh, the requirement uh, you can set this uh, degree and accordingly see here circumferential pitch is also there 1 mm pitch is a coarser pitch if you take 0 0.1 mm pitch then it will be uh, a very fine tuned data will be available to you okay then you can use a rotary sc uh, scanning system then planary scanning systems are also there so when you do the planary scheme you have an option to create at least eight plane now this bolt is converted into point cloud data gradually the data when you built up you can see these options uh, that how much data is being acquired Similarly, in a rotary scanning, uh, sorry, in a planar scanning, uh, you have here an angle between the plane you can define. Rest of the things is same, and the software will be able to give you estimated scan time also. That within this much time, uh, you will be able to complete the scanning. And I was talking about these surfaces to scan. Whenever your object is not axisymmetrical then you can always go for uh, planar scanning and if this number is 4, 6, 8, something like that, the more the number of plane, the data will be accurate but it will take more time. So uh, you need to optimize the things depending upon your requirement. Uh, during the video we have seen how gradually the data is built up. And sometimes for axisymmetrical object, even partial data is also enough. So this is how uh, you will be able to see this. And once you uh, convert the point cloud, you can do reverse engineering and convert it into point. This is a point cloud data. It is converted into the CAD model. And you can always go for the accuracy analyzer that if you see this, some data, this particular data may have a difference in Y or something like that. So accordingly, you will be able to see just like finite element analysis, you will be able to see from zero is a green on plus or minus side, you will be having the variation. Now tolerance uh, once has to fix that the object, whatever CAD model I am building will be within 0 0.1 mm. So depending upon that uh, uh, allowable tolerance, you have a control to change the model. Then needle scanner, we have just seen uh, this area that you need to define the area and on area, you can double click here, double click here to see the position by needle and this is a Z position top and bottom. You can always give the scan area automatic or you can give a manual. So manual will define a specific area and you can reduce the time. If you take an automatic, then the sensor will see any smaller thing can also be included to the entire volume, entire envelope. And then accordingly, it will scan the geometry. So this is a desktop type of uh, needle scanner. Uh, it works like this. You define X then it moves into X pitch, X pitch, X pitch, then Y pitch, Y pitch. But like this. this is the Y pitch, this is X pitch and Z bottom you have to define and you can get the component like this, the uh, .xtl or .dxf you can see and here also this is a mesh you can see, this is a model, this is point cloud and then we see accuracy analyzer. Then micro size digitizer we say fairwarm category machines, it also having this stylus. Stylus is a very crucial component of this particular setup. And uh, you can uh, club it with AutoCAD directly to get the points into AutoCAD screen. Uh, or you can save that data into Excel file format. And later on you can save it as a .txt file. So you have an option, millimeter or inches, uh, scaling factor uh, means uh, the snapping is one millimeter all these options you can define and then first position you can define origin 
So you need to put this particular point over here and say this is origin. So you have to press the pad. When you press the pad, then it will identify that this is origin 0, 0, 0. And then later on you have to define x-axis. So from here to here, if you put, it defines that this is x-axis. Similarly, when you put your cursor on another side, it will say y direction. So 0, 0 origin need to be defined. Then you need to define x and y axis. Then the machine is ready for uh, capturing the point. Then anywhere you put the stylus and press the pad, it will capture that data. So you have this option, either AutoCAD, OpCAD, Excel, and you will be uh, continuously uh, by pressing this, this data will be captured over here. So X, Y, Z data can be obtained by uh, this kind of uh, instrument. So three instrument uh, I have shown you. Uh, one, one more. Uh, we are having a light scanner also. Now see the structure of uh, this uh, light scanner. It works on the David light principle where you have a small projector over here and you have a one SLR camera. So this camera uh, is focusing onto the table bed where, where we put the component and we are trying to focus it. So this is a focus dial available to you to focus them. And uh, this is a projected pattern. And you, ne you need to ensure it by the board of the projection. And you need to ensure the pattern of this. So six uh, uh, circular patterns are there. I'll just show you that. So what is important? Matching dots and six black rings will form a right angle. So the calibrating the board is very essential in this. Once the focal distance is clear, then you will get the perfect data. So image shows all six black rings. So here I would like to show you this. This will be projected into board. Once this is completed, then your calibration is complete and you can go for scanning. Uh, the table will be rotated on which you have placed the component and accordingly the data will be captured and all data will be fused together by appropriate parameters. Auto align is very dangerous. Say use at your own risk because you don't have control on it. So this is a component which was placed over here and all fringes are being uh, visible onto the uh, display screen. Then you have all data over here. Every instances are there. If you want to remove certain thing, you can remove from here. If you want all images to be merged, then all images will be merged and you will get one component. So, uh, rest of the things are uh, removal of noises that, uh, that, that is uh, uh, reducing the data and then you can export it as a .stl file. .stl file can be used for any 3D printing applications. So, uh, basically uh, these kind of equipments are very essential to capture the data. So, I have tried to uh, show you three different scanner which is a contact and non-contact technology based and fourth one what I have shown you is working on a light based technology. Now when we say reverse engineering measurement we can use a normal software also say AutoCAD can also be used for a 2D measuring or a, for a, some photograph can also be used for modeling the object into the inventor or a pro something like that. So here you can see one uh, small clip I have prepared. Say I want to measure the dimension of this component. What should be the diameter and what should be the length. Now when I take the photograph, I should put a scale over here. I should put a scale over here. Now once I put a scale over here, then I can map this dimension that suppose from here to here 5 centimeters then in image from here to here this is how much based on that the data can be captured and accordingly
And accordingly, you will be able to uh, model it. So once you have a diameter and once you have a length, you can create a diameter and uh, you can extrude it up to certain length. So you can take a center, create a circle, whatever diameter you have measured from there, from image and accordingly you can extrude it. Now this is a 2D image, uh, we use it for a certain dimension and we convert it into 3D model. We say it is a digital mapping, either you can use AutoCAD or you can use Inventor. Similarly you can have an image, say flower pot, I will just show you in this particular uh, clip only. Then that particular uh, photo image can be used, see here. Uh, what I have created that sketching behind sketching plane another plane is being created and on that the image is stick. So those who are familiar with inventor there is an option called decal over here and in that decal you can apply the uh, images to the 3D geometry 3D model. So insert image can be used option for inserting that image into work plane. Now based on that particular image, you can sketch the geometry. So basically we are tracing the geometry over here. We create the circle, we create the profile and you can always go for the revolve option. So 360 degree revolve you can do it for creating this geometry. So you can use always a spline option to trace a particular geometry and you can go for revolve options. So you require a central axis and you require a profile. Uh, basically <coughs> there are a specific softwares which are used to convert the point cloud data into uh, the 3D model. That, for that, in those who are familiar with uh, reverse engineering, uh, sorry, uh, pro engineer software, they have a specific model called REX. Now they can use this REX model and the REX can used to convert point cloud data into the 3D model. It works on, I am not going into much detail, this is 140 slides. Four phases of reverse engineering, this software deals that. First is import data, point from data set. So you have a data dot txt, dot pts, whatever it may be dot pxl, so you will import that point phase here and then you can see the data like this, first figure of this rabbit. The software works on second phase that is a wrap phase. So this wrap phase create facets from point data, internal and external capped as it is. So basically what is facet? It tries to do triangulation. STL works on triangulation. So wrap phase also works on triangulation. It tries to join three points. That is a wrap phase. Now you have a control over that three point. We say facet phase. You can move that point here and there. You can reduce the distance between them. So all possible options for amendment is available over here. You can reduce the noise also. So facet phase is the phase where all this triangulation can be reduced to the smoothness and once you fix them you go to surface phase which is known as restyling. So if I want to model the helmet into proe 
how how do we use the risk style environment you take a photograph you put a one face onto one plane try to trace it by spline b spline all that option bezier options so all these three bezier b spline spline options are available into uh, pro engineer risk style environment even in rex model and then you can convert every data into the surface patch by the style environment this surface patch environment can be utilized for completing the model sometimes this kind of very complicated object cannot be handled manually of course some of the pushing and uh, getting embossing effect you can get that by some appropriate tools which is beyond the scope of the present presentation so there are four phases in rex module this is a specific license you need to take if you are using ptc software which works on these four principle once you do this this style environment you can convert it into solid now you can save that object as a prt part model you can split it into two mode half or you can go to stl and you can 3d print it so rex software rex module of uh, ptc is uh, a mo module of the or we can say extension of this 3d modeling software specifically to cater the need of reverse engineering so i have uh, just discussed how to capture the data and then how to convert that data into the physical object using appropriate software there are n number of software imageware is also very good software and exo is also very good software but uh, depending upon the uh, expertise or the skill of the reverse engineering engineer you will be able to uh, uh, use the appropriate module for converting physical data into model and then you can use them either for computer aided machining or for use for 3d printing machine Uh, even uh, i can uh, uh, here i have one rex demo also how this biotechnology people are uh, uh, using the bone okay, this is a scan data of bone and how the doctors are using to make this joint so they use this and using these racks all dimension of patches are decided so what should be the shape of these now this is decided by this particular model of this software so there are a lot of application uh, of uh, this reverse engineering for the benefit of uh, humanity and society uh i hope uh, for today's session i have tried to uh, give the information related with the fundamentals of reverse engineering how to capture the data by various devices and how to convert the data from point cloud to the physical model for various application uh,